guys, how's it going? And welcome back to Kitchen Table Meta. So in today's episode of Top 5 Tuesday, I'll be going over the top five super rares that you should be excited about coming out in Set 5 Miraculous Revival. Now these SRs are super cool. They got released last weekend and I'm telling you, I loved almost every one of them. They're so neat. They're so uh, influential to the meta and it's going to be so cool. So it was really hard to pick just five of them uh, to talk about in this video. Now, before we get started, don't forget that you can head on over to pro-playgames.com to do all of your pre-ordering for these. All you have to do is go to categories, go over to Dragon Ball Super CCG, go up to Miraculous Revival, and from there you can pre-order any one of these uh, special rares or any one, any card or product that you want at all from this set. So please go over, support Pro Play Games. We're doing a lot for our community with awesome events coming up, including their Super Series event, which comes up next Sunday. So not this coming Sunday, but next Sunday, the 28th, uh, which is you can win $2,000 cash prizing. It's going to be insane. And then, of course, Saturday they have that regional as well. So get super pumped up for this coming week, or not this coming weekend, but next weekend for some awesome Dragon Ball action before the next set drops. It's going to be super cool. Also, guys, I want to let you guys know that I did take all of your feedback in um, from the uh, box opening video. If you guys haven't seen that video, I'll have something up here where you guys can see it. And obviously the link will be in the description as well. But if you go there, you have a chance to win your pro a promo pack. And all you have to do is just let me know a way I can improve the channel and I can make better content for you guys. Again, guys, that's always our goal here at Kitchen Table Meta is bring content that the community wants to see and, and uh, you know, help support the community. And I hope we're doing that. So one of the things you guys really, really wanted by far was your guys' biggest, um, uh, suggestion was more deck profiles. And so what I've done is I've came up with a new series, which will be every Wednesday starting next Wednesday, which will be Workshop Wednesday, which I'll take a deck idea. I'll take a leader. Uh, the first one will be Mono Blue um, Soul Striker Goku, and I'll build the deck. Now, why I'm telling you guys this uh, is because th tomorrow, next Wednesday, or I guess this coming Wednesday, tomorrow, so it'd be October 17th, um, I'll be streaming live on Twitch starting at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And what I'll be doing is I'll be tweaking that deck. I'll be working on that deck live on Twitch for you guys to see. You guys can put in input. You can ask me questions about the deck. And then once I've refined the deck, I'll do a deck profile on that deck starting the next week. So the next Wednesday. So I'll always be, I guess, a Wednesday behind. But the idea is to you know get some games in with the deck, really work on the deck. That's why I want to call it a workshop. We just want to work on the deck and make it you know as refined as possible before we do that deck profile. I don't like to just throw decks up. I like to test the decks, really make them as, as solid as I can for you guys. And that way I have a lot to talk about too, right? I have a lot of experience about the deck. I can really just teach you guys the nuances of the deck, which is something I really want to do. So if you want to join me live, you can do that on my Twitch page, which again, the link will be in the description tomorrow at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to see me work on that deck and to come by and stop by and say hello. It's going to be awesome to get back to streaming. It's going to be awesome communicating with you guys again. Okay, so that's a lot of stuff, a lot of long-winded introduction. I really apologize, but let's get in to this top five Tuesday starting with number five. Coming at you with number five. All right, guys, at number five, we have Yamcha at 100%. And honestly, guys, number five is always the hardest one for me to do because there's always so many options that could go here. And this set with these super rares are no exception. There's a lot of really good super rares. Honestly, most of them are, are extremely playable and very good. My problem, though, was cards like Frieza Back From Hell, for example, while being extremely powerful, require a lot of things, a lot of conditions to be met for the card to be good. For example, Frieza requires seven cards to be uh, in rest mode, plus you have to play a yellow Shinron's leader. So I felt like out of all those cards that were very good but required a lot of conditions, Yamcha's was the most reasonable while still being very powerful. Now, what Yamcha requires you to do is have, it requires burst five, so you have to take five cards from the top of your deck and put in your drop. Now, I like this mechanic, I think it's a really cool mechanic, but I really hate it being tied to these effects or to a, 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 a finisher's effect. Um, however, this is pretty reasonable. Five cards isn't that much uh, in the grand scheme of things. A lot of these cards require 10, and that's just, to me, just way too many. Now, this also requires you to have a red Earthling leader, which is going to be Yamchal. Like, uh, it, that's going to be the leader that you're going to pair with this. Um, but what's really important to remember is that Yamchal is a very good leader. He's one of the best leaders from set five. He's very, very powerful, and his effect 
works really, really well with this card. So in Yamcha's Awakened side, I'll pop it up here so you guys can see it. I'll talk about it real quick. One thing I want to talk about is he has active main once per turn. Choose one red battle card in your battle area. The chosen battle card can attack battle cards in active mode for the duration of the turn. And why that's really important is because with this card, Yamcha 100%, if you have burst five, so you just take five cards off your deck, put it in your drop, this card gets plus 6,000 power its attack can't be negated uh, can't be negated and it deals two damage to your opponent's life when it KOs an opponent's battle card so if you use Yamcha leader to give this the ability to attack active cards it can't be negated so they have to combo through it and if you manage to kill something so if you target like one of their one drops or one of their weak you know battle cards it's gonna be almost impossible for them to stop this attack unless they dump a lot of cards out of their hand if they do that's a win that's great if they don't they take two damage so wh whatever they do you know it's a win-win for you and that's why i think this card is going to be really powerful uh, in that specific deck and out of all the specific you know kind of conditional uh, super rares that are included in this set i really believe that yamcha at 100 is going to see the most play and is going to be the easiest to get off you know uh get off running and really make an impact in the meta so if you haven't tried it already get the yamcha leader get this card and start building the deck because i promise you that you won't be disappointed with the power level from this card when it's paired with the yamcha leader let's take a look at number four All right, guys, at number four, we have Super 17 Cell Absorbed. Now, this is a uh, card and honestly just a series of cards that people have been really excited about. They love these Super 17 cards and the fact that this uh, these cards have really kind of strengthened the Android strategy that I think a lot of people love makes this card a no-brainer on the list. Now, this card just defaultly is really good. It's six energy for a 20,000 attacker that has critical dual attack deflect and a very powerful auto that says sparking. Uh, 10. Uh, when you have 10 or more cards in your drop area, when this card attacks, if your leader card is a green Android card, your opponent chooses two cards from their hand and places them in the drop area. This is even more powerful since this card has dual attack, meaning that it can attack twice, which means in total you can get you know four cards out of your opponent's hand, which is insane. Uh, also, this card has critical, meaning that your opponent uh, is going to lose even more cards when this card connects. So that in, that just those stats in general uh, make this card, like I said, a no-brainer on the list, a very powerful card and a great uh, addition to the Android um, series of uh, or Android archetype in our game. Now what makes this card even more uh, exciting and why I put it a little bit higher on the list than our previous card is because you can actually get this card out much sooner than turn six uh, by using the Hellfighter 17 Evil Revived card plus the Super 17 to Future Heights card to Union Absorb up to this card, like I said, much, much earlier than turn six. Now, if you can manage to pull that off, that plus the Cell Chain and a bunch of other really exciting combos, I think that Androids is really gonna be a lot stronger deck in set five, which is exciting, like I said, to a lot of players. But this card, this cell, uh, Super 17 Cell uh, Absorb card, is gonna be a huge uh, part of that puzzle to making the best Android deck. So if you don't have, uh, you know, plan to get a play set of these cards, please do because I promise you guys this is going to be uh, an absolutely big, like a powerhouse card uh, in the Android decks coming out in set five. Moving on to number three. All right, guys, at number three, we have Black Mass Saiyan the Devastator. Now, this card is absolutely insane and honestly, one of my favorite supers in the whole set. It's super cool. It's definitely uh, going to be uh, a card you're going to see a lot of in the meta and you're going to see a lot of decks built around this card. Now, this is a three cost 19,000 battle card with critical. Now, that in itself is honestly playable. Just a three cost, very splashable 19,000 critical card is something that's very, very playable and honestly pretty scary. Now, what makes this card absurd and what really puts it in the number three slot is this insane auto that says during your turn, if your leader card is black and there are a total of 15 or more Saiyan cards in your and your opponent's drop areas, when this card's attack is negated or when this card fails to deal damage to your opponent in a battle with their leader card, choose up to one card in your opponent's life and send it to their warp. So the way this card reads is that if there's 15 or more uh, sand cards, you know, between your and your opponent's uh, drop areas, like if you have 15, it works. If they have five, and you have 10, it works. 
uh, then this card will essentially always do at least one damage unless your opponent blocks. Now, black is a color that definitely has a lot of ways to deal with blockers, and so that uh, might seem a little scary, but honestly, it's just very consistent damage. This card's going to do at least one point of damage very, very often. Now, what's even more cool about this card is that that damage that it does will always be uh, will always stop your card from your opponent from getting a card, right? If it if it, this card actually deals damage, it's critical, so they have to put it in the drop, and if this effect goes off they have to put it in the warp so either way you know they're not getting that card which is super super cool as well now something else to remember is that this i say it all the time but this game is really you know revolves around sand cards right there's a, a tremendous amount of playable uh sand cards uh that we see in every single deck so getting 15 cards might seem like a lot but honestly it's not going to be that difficult to do now two cards i want to talk about really quick remember unbreakable uh Son goku the one cost combo card that uh, lets you draw a card the pseudo combo card or super combo that's literally splashed in almost every deck is a sand card and it's a card that players like to use often so that's increasing the amount of sands uh, in your opponent's drop area. Also keep in mind uh, that uh, your opponent, uh, the, the uh, if you're playing against a blue leader, um, the uh, Unyielding Trunks card is also uh, a uh, Saiyan as well. So that's another card that see, you see frequent use that will build up the drop area. That plus Bursting as well. Both players you know, will have you know, potential to be Bursting and putting a lot of cards in the drop. Also with the powerful uh, Sparking mechanic as well, you're not going to see as much uh, overwhelm being used, right? You don't have to run overwhelm in every deck anymore. You can take advantage of your drop area by using sparking. Uh, so the big counter to this card, honestly, is your opponent using overwhelm cards. But even then, you can easily build your deck around the fact that you want powerful sands in your deck and get to 15 probably pretty easy. And once you do, this card is just devastating. So the only reason it's not higher on the list is because of all these restrictions. Like I said, it's restricted to a black leader, which isn't that big of a restriction, honestly. The new Shinron black leader is insane. Plus, we have some tremendous black leaders uh, that are available right now for us to play. Uh, but it is something that we don't see, you know, a whole lot of. You know, obviously, black leaders uh, are very niche in what they do. Very few of them are just, you know, great uh, out of the box or you know, without a lot of support. Uh, also, again, 15 Saiyans, while is it going to be too difficult to get, is something that we have to you know keep in mind. Uh, but regardless, like I said, 3 cost, 19,000 critical attacker is still pretty sweet. And so definitely have this card on your radar and pick up as many of them as you can get your hands on, especially if you really enjoy playing Black Leaders. Number 2, coming at ya. All right, guys, at number two, we have Shinron, the Wish Granter. And this is my favorite super from the entire set. I love this card, and I will, without a doubt, be getting four of these cards ASAP. I love the utility this card brings. I love that everything this card can do. I love that it's super splashable. There's just nothing I dislike about this card. Now, the thing that this card can do, it's a five cost, 25,000 power battle card. It has a permanent, that the only reason this card isn't number one is because of this permanent, and it says this card can attack. Now, this is a huge downside for any battle card, obviously, but it brings, I promise you, it brings up, it, it makes up for it in its utility. Now, it has auto sparking seven, which this skill only takes effect uh, if you have seven or more cards in your drop area. Now, seven isn't a whole lot of cards in your drop area. It's pretty easy to get there, especially with all the bursting uh, mechanics that's currently um, in our uh, in the game. But if by turn five, you should easily be able to get seven cards in your drop, and you're going to be rewarded uh, tenfold for doing that. You get As soon as you play this card, you get to draw two cards, and then you get to choose one of these three things. You can choose up to four of your energy and switch them to active mode. You can choose one battle card with the energy cost three or less from your drop area and play it. And you can choose one of your leader cards or battle cards. It gets plus 15,000 power in triple strike for the duration of the turn, which is insane. So this card can do a whole lot. It's first mode, the choose up to four energy and switch them active mode. It's going to be perfect if you can play this card out of your drop area. That's great. It's also going to be mostly used, I think for me at least, uh, in a way to recover from Cell Chains or Gogeta, just ways to draw more cards when needed. Now you, you uh, combine this with like Soul Striker Leader, you can play this out, draw two, untap four, and then, um, you know, 
uh, attack with leader, untap one or even two, and then do it again. And so you can draw, you know, sometimes four, maybe six cards a turn if you can play multiple of these, uh, which is going to go a long way in the you know recovering from hand destruction in those car in those decks that really want to attack your hand. Now the second mode that says choose one battle card with an energy cost of three or less from your drop area and play it is definitely something that may not seem that powerful at first, but with all the different combo pieces, uh, for example, one of my favorite examples with this is going to be using the Universe Nine, the Wolves to um, you know, get together your, your Lavender and Basil and Bergamino combo. Uh, you can do that with this card, right? You can combo with the one of them, play it out, and play it back out from the drop, which is super, super neat. Uh, there's just a lot of ways to recover. Another good target from this is the BCC Goku that untaps energy when it comes into play, so you can go off that way as well. There's a lot of different ways to use this card, and I don't wanna you know sit here and, and preach about it, but we'll be definitely covering this card a lot in our new workshop series on Wednesday because I'll be playing this in a lot of different decks, and I'll probably be doing a Meta Monday video just on this card and all of its different, how to utilize all of its different modes. And then finally, choose one of your leader cards or battle cards. It gains plus 15,000 power in Triple Strike. Now, giving a card plus 15,000 power uh, in Triple Strike is just powerful enough. It doesn't really require you to have some super combo to make it work. But one of the funnest things I think I'm going to try, like I said, probably in the workshop series, is going to be combining this with Super Saiyan Blue Sun Goku, which was a set one leader. And essentially, if you have seven or more energy, he gets dual attack. So it just seems awesome to have a 30,000 power leader that has dual attack and triple strike. That just seems super fun. But honestly, this is just the finishing mode of this card. It's what makes this card so good and so splashable is the fact that any deck can take advantage of this mode, right? Like you just play this out, draw two cards, and give another one of your cards plus 15,000 power and triple strike. That's a game ender. That's going to be where you're going to see this card used the most. Uh, it's just a very powerful card, a very exciting card. It fits the theme of the set. It's such a cool card. It's very splashable. It's just like I said, my favorite card in this series. And if it did, if it could attack, it would easily be number one. And honestly, it's there's an argument that it could be made that this card probably should just be number one, just because of the utility and the crazy amount of um, splashable uh, splashability that it can use in any deck. It, it can be included in anything, and that in itself is is worth a whole lot. So okay, guys, that's my cho my choice for number two, and let's move on to number one. Finally, number one. All right, so at number one, we have Gogeta Hero Revive. Now this is a card that should be no surprise to anyone who uh, has seen the spoilers. This is a card that's made huge waves when it was uh, revealed, and honestly, for good reason. The card is absolutely bonkers and very, very, very strong. Now, the card has triple strike. It's a seven cost that costs uh, four blue. It's a 30,000 attacker. It has triple strike, barrier, deflect, and Union Fusion for five. Now, in case a lot of people have been kind of confused with Union Fusion, uh, this is Union Fusion uh, five, so it's three and two blue. Uh, this Union Fusion, first of all, makes this card very splashable, which is very scary, uh, but also it requires uh, one Sun Goku and Vegeta. Vegeta. Now, what's really important about this, they don't explain it in the Union Fusion of this card, but you have to have, uh, you have to take two uh, cards, you have to take one each, so you have to take one Goku, one Vegeta, put them in your drop area, uh, and then pay five to play this out. Now, the Goku and Vegeta have to have the same power, which is really, really important. They don't have to have the same cost, they just have to have the same power. So they have to like both be 15,000s or both be 20,000s. Whatever it is, whatever you choose to use um, to, to do this, it, just remember they have to have the same power. So it does make it a little bit more uh, difficult to pull off the Union Fusion. But the problem is there's just so many Goku and Vegeta cards uh, in our game that it's not that hard to find a good combination that works. In fact, there's already uh, you know a Goku and Vegeta that was released uh, in the Gogeta set, so if you choose to use this with Gogeta, you already have the two perfect targets. One untaps energy, one draws you a card. That's just really, really good. But anyway, we're not going to get too much in the different combos and stuff you can use. I just really want to explain that the fact that you can Union Fusion this card is really, really good because it makes this card super splashable. Now, if this was a seven cost card, you know, that costs, you know, or even if the Union Fusion costs three blue or maybe even four blue. Um, it would make it not as splashable. So it would make it kind of a blue tool, but with two blue and three, honestly, almost any leader can take advantage of this, which is gonna be really scary. On top of that, it has barriers. So once it comes out, it's really hard to remove and it has deflect, which means you can't even stop it like you could the cell chain uh, with cold bulb bust or some other effect like that. It's just, you, you can't, when you play this out, it's gonna happen. Now the effect is absolutely devastating. It has sparking 10. So this skill takes effect when you have 10 or more cards in your drop area. 
And it says, when you play this card, if you have five or more energy, choose one card in your life and place it in your drop area. And your opponent shuffles all the cards in their hand into their deck and then draws three cards. Now, why this is absolutely insane is because the three cards that you get to choose. So I've, I've heard a lot of people compare this to Cell Chain. It is very similar. And people go, well, Cell Chain's not super broken. Why would this be super broken? And I'm telling you guys the reason why is because the three cards that you keep are not chosen by you. They're completely random. So in the Cell Chain, I can choose three cards. I can say, okay, I want to I want a piece or I want to keep a piece of removal to remove the seven drop cell so I don't get killed. I might want to keep a negate so that when cell attacks me, the seven drop cell attacks me, I can negate it and stop it from doing damage to me. And I can keep a card that helps build my hand back. Right. So I, I keep three pieces that allow me that allow me to recover from the cell chain. With this you could use it, you know, shuffle your, your hand into your deck, draw three cards. Those could just be useless cards, and you just get completely decimated um, by the fact that you've drawn three bad cards. It's very scary that the that the recovery from this card is going to be left up to RNG. And I'm telling you guys, it's going to be a very, very impactful card. If you don't have, you know, four of these or don't plan on getting, you know, uh, a, a good number of these cards, please, please do, because I promise you guys, this card will be taking over the meta and be, you know, it may not be the best deck, but it's definitely going to be something that you've got to be prepared for and that you will see at the national level or even at the local uh, level once this card's released. It's a popular card. It's Gogeta. That's important. It works well with the Gogeta leader, which is already a fan favorite. And this is going to be, you know, a combo that you're going to have to be prepared for and you're going to see a lot of in set five. Now, guys, thank you so much for watching this episode of uh, Top 5 Tuesday. Remember, guys, if you ever have any suggestions on what to do the Top 5 Tuesday about, always feel free to leave in the description below. I mean, I'm sorry, in the comment section below. I love listening to your guys' uh, suggestions and feedback. I always want to make videos that you guys want to watch. That's the whole point of doing these. Guys, I love you so much. Thank you for the support. And don't forget, if you want to watch me live doing my um, workshop Wednesday, I'll be doing the Mono Blue Soul Striker uh, deck uh, tomorrow at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You guys can stop by Twitch, talk to me, hang out. Uh, I've definitely missed streaming. It's going to be great to get back to it. Guys, thank you again so much for the love and support. If you haven't already, please comment on the uh, uh, Draft Box 3 box opening so you guys can get a chance to win that promo pack. I don't want you guys to miss out on that. And I'll definitely be doing more giveaways uh, in the future. But guys, thank you so much again for watching. Thank you for the love and support. Love you guys so, so much. And we'll see you next time.